1986. 1986? Yeah. <laughs> he fact-checked it, guys. We have to fact-check it. We gotta fact-check it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to fact-check it first, because let me tell you, fake news. Fake news. It could news. be wrong. It could I'm, be wrong. I'm available. It's just, it's just fake news. <laughs> What's up, Alfonso Nation? It's Alfonso Peterman here, and I'm here, joined with... Me! <laughs> I'm here with Jason Burroughs, and this is the uh, individual that I was discussing uh, for a long time. Uh, he actually came from what part of Canada? I came from Ontario. Ontario. The Ontario, inside of Canada. It, wow. Um, it's in a city called Sarnia. Yes. And we're just across from Michigan. Michigan. Border. Okay. Yep. So he's from, like, that's the southern part of Canada. Yes, southern Ontario. Nice. And then he came from there to the southern part of the U.S. To meet the home dog, Alfonso Nation. So we've been filming since he showed up, literally since we first met. We've been doing a lot of activities and stuff. And we watched Bumblebee together. Yeah. Guys, we saw Transformers Bumblebee. So this is going to be the non-spoiler review. We're gonna do another video with spoilers, of course, but for the non-spoiler, for those who haven't seen it, and also, just to not even talk about the details, but just overall in general, of course, it's gonna be great to talk about how Bumblebee was and its importance to the franchise. So, first off, um, I wanna get your take. What were your initial reactions when you walked out of the theater? The movie was over, and you just saw Bumblebee. What were your thoughts? What was going through your mind? It was... A lot better than Michael Bay's films. We finally got what we wanted. Asking from Michael Bay, we didn't really get what we needed, but right. now reference to before the Autobots came to Earth and basically in the 80s, just reminding us of the Generation 1 cartoon yeah. was the best. Yeah, and, and that's what a lot of the fans agree with. They think that because of the G1 references and all of the Things that we kind of were supposed to get, I guess, in 2007, we're, not, we're, I mean, we're getting it now. So that's like super, super awesome. Do you think that the G1 is the reason why it's successful or because it's Bumblebee? Or because it's a prequel? Like what part of it do you think made it so great? Honestly, most people would say Bumblebee, but I think it was reference to the Generation 1 because yeah. in all the Transformers films, half of the robot action was, was probably Bumblebee. I mean, he, he has gotten a lot of scenes and yeah, uh, and some sometimes too much exposure. True, I agree with that. <laughs> um, but yeah. now that this is his own movie, it makes sense to right. have him as the main character. Very yeah, but, true. But reference to Generation One and the War for Cybertron was probably the yeah. best. Yeah. Probably the best. Did you think that the heart and the soul of the film, like the emotion with him and Charlie, was that necessary or could we have gone without that? It, it... It's a good question, huh? Yeah, it's a tough question. <laughs> good question. Well, I, I, I personally, <laughs> I'll just go first. I, I personally think that uh, the heart and soul of Bonvi is, it like, it encapsulates his character. It's it like, it defines who he is. You can't tell his story without explaining his emotion, like like how his like his connection with people. But I do think that the movie would have also been great if it was just like nonstop action. Because there's two sides of Omi. There's a side where he has the passion for humankind, then there's a side where he's a warrior. And he's like a battle like he's a soldier. Um and so telling each one of those sides would really tell his story pretty well. I think this movie did a perfect balance of both. Because it yeah. showed how well he was able to fight. It showed his warrior-like abilities. But it also showed his connection with humanity. Like, it also showed how he's, in a way, human himself. Yeah. You know? So since this whole war is now taking place on Earth, mm -hmm. they need some sort of connection with the people of Earth. Right. If they have too much of it, well... Yeah. That it, it takes away from the robot action. And yeah. It's a Transformers film, mm -hmm. not a 
Transformers hanging out with humans film. <laughs> it, true. <laughs> it's not robots and friends. It's Transformers. So, uh... <laughs> robots and friends. That sounds like a five-year-old's cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they got robots in disguise, and so that's kind of like a play-on on that one. Okay, so we saw the tomato meter. Yes. We saw the differences in tomato meter. I'll put it right here. Yep. This is literally like the definition of utter success. Yes. I've never seen, well, we've never seen a Transformers film got so much, like, good positive energy towards it. Like, do you think, what, what 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 part of it do you think is the reason why it's got such a high rating? Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Bam! Wait, wait. One answer. I, I can't stress it enough. I mean, going back to Generation 1, mm -hmm. where adults nowadays saw as kids. Yeah. And now they're seeing it with high quality CGI on the big screen again in yeah. today's day and age. It's gotta yeah. be heartwarming. Very heartwarming. And, and I mean, a lot of fans who started off in G1 and they didn't feel like they got what they was expecting with the live action film with Michael Bay, they're getting it now. So that could be, I think G1, like a G1 inspired film is the reason why this is so successful. Yes. Because without that, it had just been him and Charlie and the Earth and funny stuff and emotion. Yeah. But there would not have been that that all those references. So let's just get to the rating. Like I actually never thought about I didn't want to do this last night when we saw the movie because at the end of a film you're like super excited, you're like, Oh my god, that was great. Yeah. And it's so easy to just say ten out of ten. But I wanted the excitement to settle that we can go back and reflect on the film. Now that we've done that, what would you rate Bumblebee from 1 to 10? I would still have to give it a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? Alright, nice! What were, what's your rating? What would you give it? My rating for Bumblebee would be 10 out of 10. And the reason why, well, I will, well first I'm going to let you explain your, the, like, the reason why. What, what for you made this movie better? Okay, would you say this is better than any of the movies? Um... Better than all of the Michael Bay films? Because there's some people that say that, there's some people who say there's not. So, w w what's your take on it? <laughs> uh, Michael Bay's movies will hold a special place in our hearts. Of course. Always. Of course. But when it comes to looking at something new and something that we've been needing for a long time, I have to say it's a lot better than Michael Bay's films. I'm not here to slam the man, he's a good director. Of course, yeah. This, this was the movie that we needed. Yeah. Yes. So you believe this was better than the entire, like the whole one through five? Yes. This is the, 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 this is the one. This is the one. Okay. I have to say it. You know what? I appreciate it. And I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, I think that this is the movie we should have got in 2007. Yes. Like, like if we're going to leave G1 and we're going to leave the cartoons and go into a movie based universe, like a live action franchise. It would only do well to tell the story of like the transition. Like, you know, show them in their G1 designs in live action form. Show them how they came to Earth. Like, just like transition well. I think from the, the Transformers 1986 film? The, uh, the, it was a G1 film. Was it in 87? It could have been 86 or 87 or 84. There, there's two of them. So, uh, I think it was 86. But, uh, Going from that G1 film to the Michael Bay, it's like, there's a lot of, like, separation. There's a lot of things that was not fully explained. Um, yeah, and the you're right. It's 1986. 1986? Yeah. <laughs> he fact-checked it, guys. We have to fact-check We gotta fact-check it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to fact-check it first, because let me tell you, fake news. Bro, we know. Fake it news. Be it could I'm, be wrong. I'm it's just, it's just fake news. <laughs> So, yeah, given all of the success that it's had now, the fantastic ratings, record-breaking ratings, the best ratings, the best ratings in history, and given the fan reaction, all the fans, like, how much they loved it, and they say it's the one is the best movie, what would you say it's gonna make in the box office, total? Uh, I don't, I don't really have too much of a good idea on how, on average, movies would make over the weekend. Okay. I want to see, I mean, it could be, it could be really low, mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be really low or really high. Okay. But I have to say over 200 million? About 200 million? Well, they would actually make a really good profit because, I mean, the budget was like one... 135. 135. Yeah. 
So, it, I mean, it would be a pretty decent profit for a, a film of that scale. But, I, okay, so, my, my prediction would be maybe, like, I would hope for at least 350. Yeah. I would love at least And then, and then making more money over time, I want it to see over 800. Yes, most definitely. Like, if, it, if it's over 900, I'd say that's pretty successful. Very, absolutely. Like, that's almost a billion. <laughs> Let's go for a billion. Let's go for a billion. Dude, like, if this movie yeah, go, if makes a billion dollars. If it's two dollars, to 350, yeah. then it, I'd say it's a pretty successful weekend. Yeah. If, it, if it comes just short of that, yeah. it's okay, too. Yeah. I mean, because, again, given the the scale and the budget, that's technically... What they're expecting. Correct. One thing I, I do got to know, whether you're going to keep this in the video or not... Go ahead. Um, I saw that Aquaman had made 13 million the first night yeah and bumblebee had made three. Oh wow really yeah that so, like like the night of the night of release the night of release it said that aquaman had made 13 million and that bumblebee made three three million and mary poppins fell under two. Oh wow yeah so that's interesting that's yeah. an interesting statistic i think it's because the dc universe is a lot bigger there's a lot of like Marvel DC fans if out there. If you put it up against fans. Marvel, DC screwed. Yeah, now Marvel. <laughs> yeah, now Marvel has a, he has, <laughs> definitely has an advantage there. But if you're putting DC versus Transformers, especially with all like the criticism and you know like it's, that, it's like that, that is a challenge. Yeah, like we're basically coming out of a Great Depression, <laughs> so we're trying to yeah. you know repair some things. So, but given the success of Bumblebee. Do you think we're going to see any more films like Optimus Prime, maybe? Uh, from what I've heard, they are yet to find a director. Correct. Um, we need to see that. Yeah. We need to see it because it's... Because Bumblebee has been known to make contact with Earth before any other Autobot. Yeah. So that's good enough reason to have a movie taking place on Earth. Correct. Most of the time. Yeah. But as for Optimus Prime, no. He is more leading the war on Cybertron. Yeah. So if there's a movie about him that takes place mostly on Cybertron and then ends on Earth shortly yeah. after, I, I want to see that. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely going to be... For me, it's going to be a great film because that, he's my favorite character. Like, he's the reason why I like this stuff. I mean, in the, in, the, in the old Generation 1 cartoons, you see them fighting on Cybertron from time to time. Yeah. But we didn't really see a whole lot of that in the big movies. Not at all. So, that is basically our reactions and our feelings about the movie. Um, we really, really enjoyed it. We did feel like this was the one that we needed. It was perfect timing. Right at the moment where Transformers was literally about to stop making movies. <laughs> um, it, we, they, we, we thought it was all over. We thought it was over. And then here at the end of this, 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 this guy happens. <laughs> this guy happens. Travis Knight, you were awesome. Travis man. Knight, yeah. We, 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 we seriously want to thank you. And this is his first live action film. Like, isn't that crazy? If like you well see the two strings, you know why he's the best director for the job. Yeah, and I, and I do want to say, Michael Bay, you know, we wouldn't have one movie without you. We wouldn't have this movie without what you've done. Um, the storyline that you set and the track that you set, basically you set the example. And Thank I you. personally enjoyed, I personally enjoyed the Michael Bay films. Like, I enjoyed yeah, I the, you know, the explosion. It was, because at the end of the day, it's meant to entertain. It's not really to, and I know there's like the story, and it's supposed to, you know, be very, um, very faithful to the story of like G1, but I know that Michael Bay as a director, he likes to entertain people. And they had a lot of funny scenes, they had some great action, they had a lot of explosions. With Transformers naturally, with, when, when giant robots are fighting, that's what happens. So I appreciate Michael Bay's films, I love Dark of the Moon. I love them all. Age of Extinction last night is, is, is on the lower end <laughs> of that, but bit, but yeah, it's there, and change. and and that's and that's what I like about it. It was there. Um, Travis Knight, you're the game changer. Um, please come back <laughs> to you. do Optimus. <laughs> thank, thank you for your time, Michael Bay. We'll yes. take it from here. Yeah, we'll take it. Oh my god, we'll take it from here. Oh my god. So, anyways, guys, please let me know in the comment section what you feel about the B-Movie. No spoilers in the comments. This is a spoiler-free discussion. We're going to have a separate video we're going to do, like, right after this. Yes. With spoilers. 
and that's when we can talk about spoilers. But please respect everybody. Not everybody saw it on the day of release. Some folks are going to be seeing it later on. Respect them as I would want you to respect me, and as you would want people to respect you. Anyways, guys, with that being said, if you like this video, please slam dunk a like on it. Please go to his Twitch account. He is a Twitch streamer. Go check it out. He does a lot of great gaming. What kind of games do you do on Twitch? Primarily, it's been Fortnite. Fortnite. Uh, I've been at and... some point where I've done a couple Rocket League games, okay. but I'm working at pl playing other games. It, it all depends if my computer can handle it. Nice. So. Nice. So yeah, go and follow him on uh, uh, Twitch and and definitely support him there because he's, he's been doing very well. He's very consistent with his gaming, so I do like that and he's a lot better than I can do because I, I don't know Fortnite for crap. But anyways guys, <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, of course drop a like on it. And that is all for today. My name is Alfonso. My name is Jason Bros. <laughs> and I will see you in my next one. Peace, Peace. out. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>